All right, welcome. This is Drum Talk with your host, Marcus Miller. And this week I'm celebrating my teacher, the late, great Clarence Johnston. For those of you who don't know Clarence, or CJ as he was affectionately called, he was truly, truly a, a giant in the, in the world of, of jazz. Um, he knew all the greats. You know, he had stories for hours about Miles, Art, uh, man, Moody, you name him, he knew it, he had a story to tell. But he also was a really great teacher, and he was someone who, if you knew anything about Los Angeles drummers, you know, most of us found our way to sitting with, with Clarence to get straight. Uh, I got that recommendation in 98 after I moved to LA, a couple years uh, I've been out here on the West Coast and I uh, was fortunate enough to to be able to, you know, run into him and, and uh, someone recommended that I check him out and we hit it off and I spent the next 10 years sitting right underneath him and I was, those were the best 10 years of my life. Taught me a lot, made me much more solid musician as well as a better drummer and, uh, and a better man, a better person. Lot to share wisdom and knowledge, and so some of that I want to share with you. And I'm going to let his words speak, and you enjoy and listen. Shit, you couldn't see around Noel if you had to look at the stage. And uh, about an hour, I mean, almost almost three quarters of an hour later, in walked Miles, and he had come up and played maybe one tune. And uh, <laughs> the one tune he played, the band would look like they would go from here up to here. I bet. You know? But after, then he used to think they would take a break. And when they come back, it was ridiculous what they would play, man. Mm -hmm. It'd be ridiculous. Oh, that's why Miles, for about seven to eight years, that's why his rhythm section was number one for seven to eight years, the number one rhythm section in the world. Yeah. Not in the country, yeah. in the world, the number one rhythm section. Those are the cats. He had them. Huh? He had the cats. Yeah, he had the best, man. You know. Boy, you talking about putting it in the pocket? Right. No, they put it deep in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> deep in the pocket, boy. No, that was, that was something to watch, man. Yeah, you know, and seeing, seeing Max Roach's group and seeing uh, Count Basie, see Duke, see Woody Herman, see Stan Kenton. Oh, man. See I. Blakely. Oh, so many. And that's what I use. That's another thing you love. It'd be week after week, be a different group. And they always, not one or two, Always three groups. It'd be a small group, a medium sized group, and a band, big band. Always. That's the way you always had it. So that's why it was so damn interesting to go to the right. band. You know. And, uh, well, that was the most renowned club in the world, was Birdland. I played and went to South Africa, and the first thing that came in, you, you play Birdland? I said, yeah, I'm not. I like to go to Birdland. <laughs> come to the States. Yeah, everybody you can go Birdland. to Birdland. Just right. Come over. You can go to Birdland. You know. Yeah, that was, that was the color of the world, man. She wasn't. And it was very focused. So many, so many. All right. And there you have it. Those are the words from the man himself. I, I shot that many years ago. Maybe about 10 years ago. A little over 10 years ago. And one day at a lesson, you know, with CJ, I was like, man, let me, let me capture some of this just for posterity's sake. <laughs> and years later, I'm so glad I did. Uh, and hope you, hope you enjoyed that. All right. Stay tuned for more. We'll have more broadcasts other days. All right. Till then, be safe, be well, peace. <laughs>